Welcome. In a previous video I talked about setting up a Raspberry Pi to be a video monitor and in that video I talked about making the system read-only using a script on Adafruit. So in this video I'm going to talk about a different technique using the Overlay FS uh, system built into the Raspberry Pi. So I'll put a link in the description to that previous video. I'll also put a link to my Raspberry Pi playlist if you want to see my other videos. And I'll also put a link to the Raspberry Pi hardware on Amazon and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So what I have here is Raspberry Pi Full Edition, and the system now is currently read-write. I want to make this read-only. So on the graphical interface, you can go up to the Raspberry icon in the upper right, go to Preferences, and then go to Raspberry Pi Configuration. And then click on the Performance tab, and click on Overlay File System Configure. And it says Overlay Enabled or Disabled, and then Boot Partition Read-Only Read-Write. So the boot partition you can set to read-only, and that's pretty straightforward. It just sets to read-only. And then the overlay you can enable. And it says changes will not take effect until I reboot. And I'll do the boot partition also. So we'll hit OK. And it's setting it up. So one of the differences between overlay file system or overlay FS and the Adafruit way is that this is reversible. So you can turn it on and off. So we're turning it on now. We're making the system read only. OK, that finished. I'll hit OK here. It's going to ask if you want to reboot. I'll say yes. Okay, the system is booted now. So if I go into a terminal, if I type touch file and type ls, we'll see I just created this file here. Now I'm going to reboot the system and you'll see this file does not come back. So I'll type sudo reboot. Okay, we are back up. I'll go back into the terminal. I'll type ls and you can see file is gone. So it was there during that session, but then went away. So the advantage of this is that you can turn it on and off. If you had this in a computer lab with a bunch of students and they were going to mess up the system potentially, this is nice because you can just reboot it and you have a fresh system there ready to go. The downside of this is that you might make some configuration changes on this system and then reboot it thinking that it's read write and it's not, and then you'll lose everything. So the Adafruit script is more concrete. Once you set that in as read only, it's pretty much left to be read only. Now there are ways to make it read write again, but um, the overlay file system is a little bit better in that regard. So that can be done through the uh, GUI system, or you can also do it on the command line. So you can type sudo space raspy dash config, and then you can go down to advanced options, and then down to overlay fs, and it says would you like the overlay file system be enabled? I'll say no, and it says it's disabled, and it says boot partition is read only. Now I can go to finish. It's asking if I want to reboot, I'll say yes. So now I can go into a terminal, I'll say ls, do touch file, ls, and I'll reboot again. We'll see that now that I'm in the read write mode, this file will stay there. Okay, the system's booted, I'll open up the terminal. And you can see the file I created is still here. So another advantage of the overlay file system is it works with the uh, graphical interface. The Adafruit script only works with Raspbian Lite um, using the command line. So, and the Adafruit system also doesn't work with cron. I'm guessing this one works with cron, but it probably just rewrites it when it reboots. So this is just another way to make a read-only file system on a Raspberry Pi. And I explained it in the other video, but the idea of a read-only file system is that you could, say, set the Raspberry Pi up on a timer and have it turn on and off at different times during the day, and you don't have to worry about shutting it down um, where you'll corrupt the file system if you just unplug it. Having it read-only, you can just unplug the power and your uh, data will be fine on the SD card. That being said, you should always have a backup. If you have something important on your SD card, it shouldn't be the only copy. You should have a copy of it somewhere. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.